Today's gospel takes place right after last Sunday's gospel. So Jesus has just fed all these people out of a small amount of bread and fish. He has fed huge multitudes of people and the crowd's bellies are full and they go to sleep on the hillside and Jesus needs time alone. You often see him struggling to find the balance between ministry and time with God. So in the nighttime, he goes away to the mountain to pray. The disciples don't know where he is, so they get into a boat and begin to cross the sea back to Capernaum. And at the darkest part of the night, right before the sun rises, they see Jesus walking towards them on the water. They reach Capernaum. Meanwhile, the crowds have woken up and they say, where is Jesus? So they all pile in boats and they all sail across the sea. And when they get to Capernaum, there he is. And they say, well, where did you come from? How'd you get here? Jesus doesn't answer them. Instead, he says, you know, you're just looking for me because you want more bread. Instead of looking for the food that perishes, I want you to learn to search for something more, he says. I want you to learn to search for the bread of life. And they say, oh yeah, can you do that? We read about how Moses makes the manna appear in the wilderness. That's in our scripture. Why don't you make some of that appear? I love these people. And Jesus says, it wasn't Moses that made the manna appear. It was my father. And he will give you bread that's everlasting. And they said, oh great, give us some of this bread. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life. These sayings in the Gospel of John mean so much. He says, I am, seven times. I am the vine. I am the good shepherd. And this time, I am the bread of life. And this image is incredibly powerful and insightful. You see, in the ancient language of the scripture, as many of you have heard me say before, there were much fewer words, at least seven times fewer words than we have in the English language today. So for the most part, whenever you translate the Gospels or any part of the New Testament or the Hebrew of the Old Testament, you're taking this big word and you have to decide between seven or eight precise English words that are very different in their meaning. So most of the time, when we translate the Bible from the original into English, we are drastically limiting its meaning except when it comes to certain words. There were certain words that the ancient people understood much more deeply than we understand today. For example, the word love. In the Greek of the Gospels, there are four words for love. And the word life. In the ancient Greek of the Gospels, there are three different words for life. There is bios, from which we get biology, which is physical life, right? Like animals and plants. There's psyche, which psychology comes from, which is the life of the mind, intellect, reasoning, awareness. Most human beings are born with bios and psyche. Some animals have a little bit of psyche. My dog, Coley, doesn't have very much, but... 
But then there's this third kind of life, which is entirely different. It is not something you're born with. And that is called Zoe. Zoe refers to the life of the divine, to eternal life. And it is not something that you are born with. It's something that happens to you when you're baptized. It comes into your heart at your baptism. And Zoe is something that just like our bodies and our minds needs to be cared for and nourished and grown. It needs to be fed. We can feed eternal life by receiving this mystical bread that is Jesus' body, the bread of life. You know in the Catholic Church, in the Roman Catholic Church, if you don't receive communion on Sunday, it's a sin. Now, of course, we Anglicans are much more mystical and generous and kind of don't say, but it does tell you something, that this is important. So as wonderful as it is that we have people who watch this service online and welcome to all of you, come inside this place and take the bread because it is an incarnational thing that feeds your life in God. And there are other ways to nourish that life as well. Time in prayer. Time living as if the kingdom of God has already gotten here. Time filled with joy and generosity. There is a woman named Anne Voskamp who wrote about how she and her sons were so moved by God's role in their life that they took some of their savings and for an entire month, once a day, they did something radically joyful and generous. I love some of the things they did. They went to Starbucks and there was a long line behind them and they bought coffee for every single person behind them. They went to a hospital parking lot that had a standard parking fee they left envelopes with the amount of the parking fee on everyone's windshield. They went to the dollar store and they put dollars down the aisles with little notes that said, God bless you. They bought bouquets of flowers and delivered them to the nursing homes. And this woman, Anne, said she just felt this depth of joy. It was different from health, which comes from the bios, or happiness, which can come from psyche. The joy of Zoe life is a different kind of joy. It's a deep joy. She was getting nourished in her life in Christ by doing these radical, explosively joyful, fun things and making people laugh and smile for no reason at all. You know, we have a new family from Jordan here at the church. And yesterday, we delivered a, a sofa bed to their new apartment, Raja and Lily and J.D. and I. This family has suffered some in Jordan. As many of you know, it's very difficult now to be openly Christian in some of these countries. Kais, the father, has a master's degree and ran a business, a software and computer engineering business, which was very successful, but he was pushed out of his business because he was Christian. And even the people who worked for him would no longer hire him. He had no work for two years. So in trying to come to this country, they didn't know where to go. Nancy, the wife, went online and she started searching for a place, for a church, and she saw the name of Raja Zabane on the internet. That sounded Arabic to her. <laughs> so she put a message to him on Messenger on Facebook, and Kais told me that when Raja wrote her back in Arabic, she had to leave the room and cry and pray for a half an hour she felt like she had found her connection 
in her life in Christ, a place, a home to come. So here they are, and we're trying to get them some furniture and a used car and figure out how they can work. And I was talking to Kais in, in this little apartment, and he said, you know, it's so beautiful, this life we share, because Father Raja came, and, and the church helped him, and now he's helping us, and one day, when I become established, I will help more people come, and we will help more people come, and the love will live on. It is so joyful, this life that we're given. And as your body, your bios, and as your mind age, your zoe doesn't retreat. I've seen people who are ill and old, but their life in God is explosive. But we must tend to this special life in Christ. We must remember what it is we're doing here, how incredibly important and vital this bread is. I think if this bread is, I think if people really understood what it was, we would have lines out the door. Because this is the stuff of everlasting life. This is joy. Amen.